ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا وامامنا وقائدنا محمد ونبينا ورسولنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله بالغمة وتركنا على المحاجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك وبعد فإن أفضل الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر المول محدثاتها وكل محدثة في دين الله بنعة وكل بدعة في دين الله ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Allahumma ajirna min al-nar My brothers and my sisters, I begin with a greeting of Islam May the peace and the blessings and the mercy of Allah be upon you I continue by testifying that none is worthy of worship except Allah And by testifying and declaring that the beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Is the final messenger and a servant of Allah Whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, none can misguide, none can lead astray. And whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to go astray due to their own wrongful actions, desires, sins, and inclinations, none can guide back except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I begin by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our shortcomings, to give us clarity, guidance, steadfastness, and to allow us to be from those who meet Him in the best of ways, Ya Rabb. Ameen. My brothers and my sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Talaq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبَ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَالِغُ أَمْرِهِ قَدْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدَرًا Now this, the context of the surah or the context of the ayah is very important. Because this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises in it that whoever has taqwa of Allah, whoever has true conscious awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that leads to self-criticality, whoever protects himself or herself by protecting the boundaries that Allah has set. That's what taqwa is. To protect yourself by protecting the boundaries that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set. And to take those boundaries very seriously and to hold yourself accountable by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed and legislated, what's going to happen? What's the promise? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Allah will always find a way out for you. You know, life is full of moments where you will feel tight. You will feel limited and caged and bound. Some people may be bound by their mistakes. They keep being, again, they're held by the mistakes or the shortcomings that they've made. Others may be limited by their socioeconomic status. Others may be limited by poverty. Others may be limited by you know, having no access to resources. Others may be limited by their marriages. Others be, may be limited by their careers. Others may be limited by the things they, they took and the steps they took seeking freedom. So we're all limited in some ways. We're bound. We have those moments where we feel very limited. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Regardless of what your limitation is, whether it's intellectual, whether it's economic, whether it's, you know, subhanAllah, even oppression or whatever kind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that if you have true taqwa, Allah will find a way out for you. Allah will find a way out for you. And this is very important for us as Muslims. Anytime that you're in a position where you have to choose between the halal and what is gray or haram in some level, and you choose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it seems like you're making, you're making sacrifices, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will work things in your favor as long as there's sincerity and as long as there's long-term trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as long as that trust is not translating into something transactional. You're not saying, yeah, Allah, I've done it. Now what? Where is, where is the promise? Because that's not how it works with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It works by having a full trust that knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can. So Allah promises He will find a way out for you. And Allah will provide for you from where you least expect. 
Allah will send good down your way from where you least expect. The last door that you thought would open, Allah would open for you. The last opportunity that you thought you'd never have access to, Allah will open for you. And Allah will send it to you. And in doing so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow you to truly understand His potential and capacity. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلَ عَلَى اللَّهِ Whoever has true trust in Allah, فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Allah will be enough. Whoever has true trust in Allah, and there's a difference between tawakkul and tawakkul. Tawakkul is to sit there and say, okay, I trust you Allah, do, I'm sitting back and watching what you are able to do. That's not what tawakkul is, that's tawakkul. Tawakkul is to basically become passive. And to say that Allah is so capable, I don't need to do anything. Like what Ben Musa'id did. He said to Musa, إِذْهَبْ أَنْتَ وَرَبُّكَ فَقَاتِلَا إِنَّهَا هُنَا قَاعِدُونَ You and your, and your Lord, O Musa, go and fight. We will stay here. We've seen what your Lord can do. He split the sea and he saved us from Fir'aun and he has so much capacity. We're just limited human beings. You go do the job because we trust God so much that we know we don't have to do anything. That's not what tawakkul is. That's tawakkul. But what is tawakkul then? Tawakkul is say, Ya Allah, I don't know where this path is going to take me. I don't know. But it's the path that you've opened up for me. And I don't know if I'm able to do it, but I will do everything in my capacity. And in choosing, you have two or three paths, you choose the best of the paths that will make you closer in, 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 in your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're willing to give up things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you're willing to pursue the path that seems, you know, imagine you have two options, you can, you can wait, you can wait. Let's, let's talk about it from a business point of view, you have two options. One is going to make you immediate, immediate money, but it's not halal, or it's mashbu. It's got some, you know, gray areas where there's some question marks. And you have another option, which is maybe going to make you five times less what the other could have done. But it's 100% halal. And you say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I don't know, on paper, in numbers, this option seems like it's not going to make me that much. But because this option you've deemed halal for me, I will take this. And I will do everything in my capacity to make it happen. My capacity. But I will recognize that on my own I can't, but through you I can. That's what trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. That's what tawakkul is. You've done the best that you can. To make the best choice and to follow through and make him that choice with the best of actions, knowing that at the end the result is not dependent on you. The result is not dependent on your calculation and your balancing of the sheets. No, it's dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires that you do your best. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that whoever does that, Yarzuquhu min haythu la yahtasib. Allah will bless and provide from where you least expect. Maybe that business will not make you that much money, but the risk will come from elsewhere. The risk may come in your health. The risk may come in your ability to sleep well at night. The risk may come in the, in the form of a child that Allah blesses you with that will bring happiness and joy to your eyes. The risk may come in the form of a a daughter that Allah blesses you with that brings a smile to your, to your face every time you look at her. That is may come in the form of a relationship that you have with a brother or a sister that is genuine for the sake of Allah. That is may come in the ability to open up the Quran and read it and to be able to understand and to be able to be touched by it and to shed a tear out of love for Allah. That is may come in the form of Allah opening up your heart so that you're more selfless, you're less selfish, you're kind, you're able to relate to people, you're able to feel and understand the emotions and the struggles of others. That is may come in the form of eloquence that Allah gives you, that will allow you to open up people's heart and to change people's lives. That is may come in the form of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, allowing your dua to be accepted and allowing your all the things that you're asking for to be given to you partially in the dunya and partially in the akhirah. But I don't get to choose what risk Allah provides for me. Because who am I to tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what I deserve and this is what is good for me. 
The risk may come in the most unimaginable of ways. And there's no limit when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives. Like the Nabi sallallahu when he saw that man asking, and he said, Allah, give me Jannah if you, if you want. And don't, don't say that. Say, Ya Allah, give me Jannah with certainty. And when you ask, don't just ask for Jannah. Ask for Jannah and Firdaus. Ask for Jannah and Firdaus. When you ask Allah, don't be shy to ask. Because Allah can. And that's part of the trust. Is knowing there's no limit with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Whoever has that level of trust in Allah, Allah will be enough. إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَالِغُ أَمْرِهِ Allah will always find a way to allow your affair to reach its height, to reach its capacity. Allah has a way of allowing His will to be. كُنْ فَيَكُونْ Be it is done. But Allah has allowed for there to be a means to achieve anything. You know, people say nothing is impossible. The Quran says that. There is nothing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot do. Everything is within the capacity of Allah. So when you're setting your ambitions and your goals, when you say, I'm putting my trust in Allah, nothing is impossible with Allah. Nothing. So be ambitious, humble, trusting, but ambitious, resilient, and strong in the pursuit of your goal. Determined with tenacity and strength, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can. Now here is where this is all made even more beautiful. The context of the surah is talking about divorce. Surah Al-Talaq. And it's talking about how sometimes you are in a position where the one human being that you depend on the most, your husband or your wife or your family, the place where you seek your support, that is collapsing. And you're looking for a way out and you're thinking, how, how is this going to happen? How is there going to be good out of this? How am I going to pick up myself again after losing my best and most strongest support system? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends these ayat as a reminder, even if you're in that position, have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In exiting relationships, you know people, what, what do we do as human beings? We're the best at the beginning of the marriage, at the beginning of relationships, but then when things go sour, we show the worst of us. The worst of us. Right? Wa idha khasama fajr, as the Nabi Sallallahu says, one of the signs of a hypocrite is when they let go, when they give up on you, they will show you the worst kind of treatment and mistreatment. Right? But the Quran teaches us the opposite. Al talaq wa marratan. Divorce is twice. If you can't contain your self control and show respect to that person, then you need time to fix things. Give that person a chance elsewhere. Either you hold on with what is noble and acceptable or you let go in the most beautiful of ways. You know, we do the opposite. The Quran teaches us something, but we do the opposite. When we get married, we show the best of us. When we're getting to know the person, flowers, beautiful words, honeymoon that will put you in debt for the next 40 years of your life, three years of your life, to be more... Um, you know, to, to be more realistic. But that's what we do. We go all out to show the best of us. And then when we're letting go of the relationship, the worst of us comes out. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the opposite. When you're starting off, start in a sequential step where you give enough that you can sustain it. Whatever you give, you should be able to give the same and more next year. That's how it should be in our relationships. That's what Allah says. Be ma'roof. Hold on with what's noble and acceptable. So that you can set up yourself for success. When do you do that? When do you do the honeymoon and you splurge and you give your best and you show the best? If you're at a point where you have to depart your ways, that's when you show your best. Islamically speaking. And that works for any relationship, whether it's business, whether it's a friendship, any relationship that is coming to an end, that's what we should be doing. And at that moment, when you show taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you have the capacity to make someone else's life miserable, for what? 
out of spite, to feel better out of ego, I'm going to make you suffer because I'm suffering. What low, selfish way of dealing with human beings. But when you say to others through your actions, I recognize that I'm in pain, but I will do the best to overcome that pain and show the best of myself in this most vulnerable of times, that Allah says is taqwa. That is taqwa. You want an example of taqwa? When you're emotionally vulnerable and you want to show that pain through words and action, but you choose to give the best, Allah says that is taqwa, and you let go in the most beautiful of ways, that is taqwa. Allah promises that individual who's implementing that mind state and mentality, Allah will find a way out for you and give you from where you least expect. Don't depend on human beings. Human beings are limited. Love them because Allah tells us to. Love each other. But don't depend absolutely maximally on each other. We will have various ways of disappointing one another. But who will never disappoint us when we do things genuine and sincerely? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be from those who invest in one another, love one another, but do so for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah allow us to be from those who trust one another, love one another, but all through the trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم سائر المسلمين الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على المصطفى اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك اللهم لنا في معطيت اللهم اهدنا وهدي بنا وجعلنا مهتدين اللهم بارك لنا وفينا وعلينا وجعلنا مباركين اللهم احفظ بلاد المسلمين عن اليمائن والشمائل يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعلنا مسلمين مؤمنين صادقين قانتين راكعين ساجدين آمرين بكل معروف ونهين عن كل منكر ولا تجعلنا كاذبين ولا حاسدين ولا ضالين ولا مضلين ولا مضلين يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا اللهم اشف مرضانا ودأو جرحانا وعافي مبتلانا وتقبل دعاءنا يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر المسلمين والمسلمات وارحم المؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وأقم الصلاة الصلاة كانت على المؤمن كتاب المنقوذات